that sold me something on eBay that said, hey, it was a handwritten note from a 12 year old, you know, that said, thank you very much for your purchase. We appreciate it. And it reminded me of when I was 10 years old, except I didn't have eBay and didn't have all these options to buy singles online. So it was just, it was refreshing. So it just shows you kind of all generations. Are oh, the, 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 the hobby's exploding and the happiness is absurd. Dustin, get in here. T let's tell like Dustin, Dustin, like <laughs> Dustin, how much happiness has getting into collecting Pokemon and flipping Pokemon been for you? Hey, sports card collectors and investors. I hope that everybody is having a great Monday. It's back to the grind. Um, had a pretty good weekend. I can't really complain. Um, hung out with the little ones quite a bit. Uh, enjoyed some really good content from the virtual expos that were put on, the virtual shows, Hobby Palooza, as well as the virtual. Uh, so that, that was fun. Um, and so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about some cards that are showing some movement on the ladder. Um, and let me just say, so I use card ladder as my data tool. So when I'm talking about moving up and down the ladder, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, but I do wanna kind of put that disclaimer out there. There are many different data tools out there. Card ladder is not the end all be all for, for data tools. So try them out, try out all of the ones that, that you can find and pick the one that is best for you. And honestly, you might not even want or need a data tool. You might just wanna go and um, you know, do the eBay sold listings yourself and kind of gather that data yourself. The data tool that I use happens to be Card Ladder. Um, I also want to say too, this is not a buy it now or sell it now, sell these cards now, buy these cards now site. So when I'm showing data on cards, it's not a, a recommendation uh, by any stretch. It's simply just showing you how certain cards are moving based on you know current events uh, that could be going on, or just based on you know the way that. Uh, the hobby is reacting to cards. So just want to put that out there. I'm excited to, to dig into this video and we will go ahead and get started. So one card that has moved a lot, um, and this is kind of the bull bull effect, I feel like. Um, we have, you know, TJ Warren had a big game here recently and his 2014 Prism base rookie card and it's amazing how base cards have moved. You know, it's funny, we, we, we talk about, you know, graded cards and, you know, let, you know, the focus should be on, on graded cards, but man, base cards are, are starting to get more and more expensive. I think with the lack of product out there, you know, base cards have, have really heated up, um, or excuse me, not base cards. Well, yes, base cards, but I'm talking raw cards. Raw cards have really heated up um, you know, over the last few months, it seems like, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's been wild to see. So that first card is the 2014 Prism TJ Warren raw rookie card. This is a card literally on July 29th was $3 and 50 cents on average, give or take on August 1st, August 2nd, this thing is now at $31, $32. You're talking about 10 times really after one game. Um, I believe it was, it was after that, that one big game that he had. Uh, so we'll have to see if, if TJ Warren can kind of carry that through, if that momentum continues, or uh, is it going to retreat off of that $31, $32? But that, that is the, um, the fastest moving card um, on the card ladder that, that we've seen here over the last couple of days, it looks like. All right, next up, I've got the 1981 Donruss Golf Jack Nicholas. PSA 10. So we've got some variety in today's show. We've got cards from all different all different backgrounds. Um, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. We've even got boxes uh, that I'm going to talk about too. So, um, but this card, interesting card. Um, you know, fairly scarce with a pop of 169 in that PSA 10. I'm not sure if this is considered a rookie card for Jack Nicklaus. Um, I'm not a golf card, uh, you know, expert by any stretch of the imagination. So if there's anyone watching that really knows golf cards, is this considered a rookie card or is it just considered, or maybe he doesn't even have a rookie card. I'm not, I'm not sure, but if anyone has any feedback on that, that'd be great. On May 17th, uh, this card was at $800 and now we're seeing pricing. Uh, there was a sale at $1,818. And so Something also to keep in mind with some of these, I would consider this kind of on the borderline of vintage. There aren't many sales of these types of cards, so it can show a big price hike, but you know, it's not as if 50 of these cards transacted over the last 14 days, over the last three months, over the last six months. I mean, 
the, the, the transaction rates are, are very low. So kind of take that with a grain of salt as you're looking, you know, looking at these sales. I've seen that with, with vintage cards, they really can be all over the place just because of the lack of transactions price-wise. All right, next up, I've got the 2012 Prism Football Hobby Box, a sealed hobby box. This is interesting to me. So this is kind of this is kind of telling me that people are looking at that crossover. So in basketball, 2012 Prism, that's the first set of, of, of Prism basketball. I believe that was the first set of Prism period. So whether that be football, baseball, basketball. And so you see this kind of crossing over where people are probably thinking like, oh shoot, you know, look at what's happening with basketball prices for those 2012 Prisms. You know, I should probably put some, some uh, thought into 2012 football. So I thought that that was, Kind of interesting. Football cards haven't gotten nearly as much love as basketball uh, and baseball cards uh, historically, and so it'll be really interesting to see if football kind of closes that gap here. It has certainly over the last 12 months; they've become a lot more popular. Uh, but I'm I'm curious to see how that how that kind of ends up. So this is on May 8th. This hobby box was $700, and now it's at there was a sale at $1,699. So. You're talking about in two and a half months, this thing going up 2.5 times. Um, and granted, there's not gonna be boatloads of these sales, but still, it just shows you that demand has risen uh, for all things 2012 Prism, it looks like. All right, next up, we've got a very popular player, one of my guys, uh, Luka Doncic. 2018 Select Luka Doncic Courtside Base Raw. Now, the thing, again, this is interesting to me. So this is a rookie card for him. This is the more rare of the three select cards. So for select, it's going to be concourse is most common, then premier, and then courtside uh, for basketball cards. So this is his most rare select that, that's not a parallel. This is the base courtside rookie. Um, in, in April uh, April 20th, there's a sale at $235. We're seeing some recent sales. There was a recent sale at $899. Um, and that's the thing that's interesting to me is raw cards just being bought up. I mean, because you are taking a risk. You don't know if that's a PSA 10 that you're buying or a PSA 5, you know? I mean, PSA is not handing out PSA 10s anymore. And and from what I've seen, well, not that they, not that they were, you know, before, but um, from what I, I keep getting more and more feedback that it's becoming harder and harder, that maybe PSA is becoming a little bit more stringent on requirements. That could just be the rumor mill talking. Um, but I, I've heard, I've heard the, you know, kind of rumblings for people that do a lot of submissions with PSA that they're not getting, you know, the same results that it's becoming a little bit tougher, uh, to get those gem mints. So, um, but so that's why it's even more interesting to me. Is it, is that a trend where people are just saying, you know what? I, you know, I'm not going to get that, you know, I'm not, or it's just like, maybe people are saying like, you know what, I'm not seeing a huge difference when I'm looking at that card between PSA 9 or 10, or I'm seeing discrepancies between an, a PSA 9 and 10 with some of these modern cards. So I'm just going to buy this, a good raw copy. I'm happy having a good raw copy of this card and maybe getting it graded down the road or maybe just having, having the raw copy. Um, you know, I don't know. That's kind of an interesting debate. I'd be interested in hearing what you all think. Are you buying more raw cards? If you've always been someone that's buying graded cards, are you moving more towards raw or vice versa? You know, how is that working out for you? All right, next up, another vintage card. And again, I say we have to watch this because vintage cards are, they're not volatile price-wise at all, but just because there's not a lot of transactions for these, the pricing can be all over the place. So I do think we have to take it with a grain of salt, but this is a card that I do actually believe there has been more interest in, um, and so I'll go over that. And, and we've seen this across the board with a lot of vintage basketball lately, vintage in general, but especially vintage basketball. 1961 Fleer Wilt Chamberlain PSA 7. So. We're showing a sale back in February, February 19th of this year at $9,555. And then a very recent sale at $17,999. So almost double what it was six months ago. And pop, pop on this one is 225. So they are, they're fairly rare, but they are out there. 225, I mean, that's a fair amount uh, to me. So. Um, at that price, when, when you're talking about a twenty thousand dollar card, um, you know, eighteen thousand dollar card. So I, that's one again where you know, with vintage, you just kind of, I, I, as I've done research on vintage cards, the, the price points because they just don't come up for sale the same way that that others do because a lot of collectors are holding those. You know, vintage cards in general, and I'm just kind of speaking from what I've seen, are not 
buy and flip cards. Those are buy and hold cards. So you just don't you, you don't see a lot of those hit the market. All right, next, um, and this is something that, that another content creator hit on in a recent video, the comeback card investor Brad. Um, and it was something that popped up that I really like to see because it's something, again, I'm a football card collector and a basketball collector at heart. Um, I dabble in baseball, but really the focus is football and basketball for me. And so this one is a 2011 Topps Chrome Julio Jones rookie card refractor raw. The thing that's interesting to me about this is it's a raw copy, um, but it seems like there's just such a huge push towards chrome refractors, uh, you know, and people are looking for those cards, whether it be rookie cards or not, you know, those tops finest, um, you know, to where it's got some, it's, it's blingy looking, you know, it's shiny. Um, the shiny stuff, man, is just, is hot right now. And this is a card, not huge movement, but it's showing movement. It's a card that at the end of June was at $41 a sale, and now you're seeing a sale at $64.88. And so is that, you know, the QB heavy NFL, you know, investments for football, is it now moving down to those skill players? And, and we've seen it. We, we've seen more of the, you know, the Christian McCaffrey's and the, uh, the Michael Thomas's uh, getting some more hobby love. And it, it'll be interesting to see if that's going to push down to other players. Julio Jones is... You know, he's never won a Super Bowl, but very, very accomplished player. I don't, I don't think he'll have any trouble getting into the Hall of Fame with his stats and his longevity and his toughness. I think he's still got a couple more years left. Um, and so I think, it, is it going to trickle down? Um, and how, how is, you know, the fact that, I mean, we're, we're on track to have an NFL season, but with, with the COVID stuff, I'm just, I'm holding my breath on the NFL season. I, I'm just not certain how they're going to be able to handle it. With how physical the game is, how many guys are on each roster, I, I, I know they can do as much, they, they can try as hard as they can, but it's just, I don't see it being as, um, as easy to pull off as the NBA in the bubble, and the, and the NFL doesn't have a bubble. Um, yeah, I did read today that Sean Payton and the Saints are holed up in, uh, I believe it's the Lowe's Hotel in New Orleans, but you're talking about, I think it was 200 employees, players and employees that are in this hotel. And it's not required. It's not mandatory that they stay in the hotel. They're just trying to keep everybody isolated in the same place. But it's not like they can't leave the hotel. They can leave it. Um, but that's their way of just really trying to focus on keeping all the guys together and not, um, you know, not getting out and hopefully trying to limit, you know, their exposure. But you know, you saw Peterson, the Eagles head coach, uh, has COVID. You know, so it's just, I, I just don't know, man. I, I, I just don't know how it's going to go. So I'm just very hopeful that we can see an NFL season through. Um, but this is interesting to me. So these Julio Jones rookie cards, and, and it makes total sense. I would love to see some more hobby love for those skill players. All right, last but not least, I want to touch on this viewership. I'd like to hear from you on this because I am not a, uh, I don't focus on baseball cards. So 2012 Prism Baseball Hobby Box Sealed. Now, from what I understand, Panini does not have any sort of licensing with the MLB. And so when you talk to baseball card collectors about Panini products, they immediately jump down your throat. Do not touch Panini baseball product. Um, and I get it. I, I understand from the licensing standpoint. Um, but I'm just wondering, I mean, and I remember I did a video months ago and it was there was optic hollow baseball cards that I thought were so awesome looking. Um, and people were just like, look, they're so cheap because they're it's unlicensed product. No one's going to buy it. But is that like a zag, a zig to the zag, a zag to the zig where these things, you know, because of the popularity of Prism, you know, this is a 2012 Hobby Box baseball Prism sealed in April, $367, now $899. So people are taking note of the fact that 2012 Prism is a hot year, first year Prism, and they're buying baseball too. They don't care. And, and I wonder if that's just a hedge. You know, is that a hedge against against this thing? And I wonder too. Just and now I'm thinking about with baseball cards, you can get PSA 10 opt like in basketball. Extremely like if, if it was a basketball card, it'd be extremely expensive to buy. On the baseball side, it's dirt cheap for you know Acuna's and for Juan Soto's and you know these hot players. And so it's just kind of like, is that something that's going to hit? And we all kind of miss the boat because it was an unlicensed product. I'm curious to hear what you guys think on it. I know what the hardcore baseball collectors will think. Are you rethinking it? Do you see the, the value um, in Prism? Or do you understand, I guess, why people are going in that direction? Anyway, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love doing these videos. As you can see, I come with daily videos um, on sports card investing and collectibles investing in general with some personal finance kind of mixed in. 
Um, so we appreciate it. Please subscribe, and we will see you again soon. Thanks, guys.